Daddy, is it right or wrong to shed tears when praying? Daddy, I do respect people, but they always disrespect me. What should I do, sir? Daddy, is it okay to teach my children how to pay tight? Oh, yes. Daddy, do you want me to bother about ancestral powers after giving one's life to Christ? All right, let's start tonight. Daddy, I do respect people, but they always disrespect me. What should I do, sir? Walk away. We have spoken about this again and again. If you respect people and they disrespect you, they don't worth your respect. And friendship is not by force, it's by choice. We have said that all the time. Please add value to yourself. Success has many brothers and sisters. Failure is an orphan. Add more value to yourself. Go up in life, in your business, in your career. You find a lot of people respecting you. So the people you are trying to respect and they always disrespect you feel that they are superior to you. So they feel that they are superior to you. They feel that you don't measure up to their standard. You too, walk away, add value to your life. All successes meet at the top. If you succeed in what you are doing and I succeed in what I'm doing, we all meet at the top. So all these, uh, I try to show respect to people that disrespect me is because they haven't seen your result. I prophesy tonight, your result will intimidate your enemy in Jesus' name. If you are a first timer here, if you are watching this program for the first time, please indicate, type your name and say, I'm a first timer. I'm watching this program for the first time. I'm a first timer here. Some of you, you are, many of you, you are members of Tony Point family, but this is the first time you are joining our live broadcast. Say so. And Tony Point Global Family welcomes such people. Living Spring uh, Global Family welcomes such people. Daddy, is it okay to teach my children how to pay tithes? Oh, yes. That is part of Proverbs 22, verse 6. We have always used to teach ourselves. Train up a child in the way he or she should go. When he or she grows up, he will not give you trouble. He will get used to what you have put into them. And remember what I have said? The one of birth to the seven of life. Teach your children about tithing. Show them from the Bible as they begin to grow up and make them do it. Whenever anybody gives them gift, money, say to them, tithe, a tenth of it belongs to God. Right from age two, age three, age four, age five. When they grow with it, tithing will not be a problem to them. They will have come into that covenant relationship of tithing and offer other sacrificial giving. So it is one of the virtues, Christian virtue, that we must teach our children from infancy. When a child is 18 years, 20 years, he has gotten his or her mind. It's difficult to change people at that level. So teach them tithing, church going, prayer, all the fruit of the spirit, all the virtue, morality, respect, integrity. Uh, teach them from infancy. When they grow, they will do you proud. Everybody keep sharing, keep sharing. I want a higher traffic on YouTube. Daddy, is it right or wrong to shed tears when praying? <laughs> to shed tears when praying. It all depends on how emotional you are uh, or how much the thought of God, the revelation, whatever revelation and insight came on you at that time, we are all at different level of man of demonstrating emotion. Why some people can hold their own their emotions, some people can't hold theirs. So when people pray and they are shedding tears, maybe they felt touched by a particular thing, a particular revelation. Sometimes it is just with the love of God. So also unworthy fellow, God pours so much on you. It may just be a, a major saving. A major, a major deliverance, a major uh, protection, and then a major uh, windfall, breakthrough. You just felt, ah, why do I decide this? Sometimes we are unable to hold our emotion uh, when praying, but it's not all. Our level of emotional release differs. So uh, 
when pray, but when it becomes the norm, then something is wrong about that. In our crime here, there are some people they were called. I don't know whether they still call them that name. They call them the weeping church. They know every time they weep for their sin, every time they come to the altar crying for their sin, that is wrong. When God forgives, He forgets. We are to stay connected and never go back to where we are coming from. But sometimes we are overwhelmed. Oh, that's the word I was looking for. We are overwhelmed with the awesomeness of God, with the revelation of God, with the depth of the understanding of His love, some breakthroughs, some ima unimaginable deliverances and safety, some divine connection. We are overwhelmed. And sometimes emotion runs wide. So, Please make your own contributions. You can hear that. I haven't seen contribution here. On YouTube, are you hearing me clean and clear? Are you hearing this discussion? Are you hearing the questions and the counseling I am giving? Are you hearing me clean and clear? Okay. All first timers, Kido Chidi. Since I'm a first timer, I'll keep welcoming them. Okay. Olufumilola. Allow me say yes. Are you hearing me clean and clear? On okay, for look on that, they say yes, daddy. Okay, so if you have any contribution to make, okay, okay, on YouTube, say yes, sir. That your salako on YouTube, say yes, sir. Okay, Tenic, they who bought, say yes, I'm hearing you, sir. Okay, all first timers begin to indicate. Akimo, you listen to me on YouTube, say, I can hear you. Okay. So if you have any contribution to make, please do so. Call up or say, hearing you clean and clear. Bolani Wamutala, yes, sir. Okay. Ubi, Sami, Etim, I'm hearing you clean and clear on Facebook. Okay. So we are just talking about why people cry when they pray. Why is it that some people cry? I say you could be overwhelmed with God's awesomeness. God's love, total breakthrough, the reality of God, the vision. When you get the vision, the reality, when it dawns on you. And of course, it could also be some other things, but our emotional level is totally different. Okay. But crying when praying should not become the norm. Should not become the regular thing. So that you don't become those people with there, they call it joy lecon, the crying and the weeping church. That one will have gone to something else. Should not be a doctrine. Should not be we're making a doctrine out of it that every time you go to pray, you are crying. But something will be wrong about that. Daddy, do one need to bother about ancestral powers after giving one's life to Christ? There are some pastors who lay emphasis on undergoing deliverance after accepting jesus as one's lord and savior in order to be free is this right sir where well, is a matter of uh, doctrine i have told you every church has its own doctrinal slants i agree with you there are churches that deliverance is the main thing there are pastors and churches that build their whole doctrine and life on deliverance and their deliverance means you should fall down and roll and vomit and show emotionalism. And I discovered something. It is what people hear regularly that they become. If you are in a church where it is falling under the anointing, falling under the anointing, the pastor throws his jacket, people fall. He raises his leg, people fall. He waves his hand, people fall. At a point, before he say, people are already falling. It's, it's such a... Uh, a, a thing I, that I find difficult to explain. I've gone to churches that almost everybody, the choir fall all the time. The choir, the usher, the frontline worker, they fall all the time. And the most time when you call a new uh, comma up, it doesn't fall. So you discover that falling, falling has become the pattern. And that atmosphere has become falling atmosphere. Uh, because people set their mind there. What people hear define them. If it is balanced truth of the word of God they share, deep revelation that they need to apply to their life to make meaning out of their lives like we do, that's what they become. 
There are churches that before the pastor say anything, hey, who are the builds that church? People become what they hear all the time. You go to some churches, you hardly can hear what the pastor is saying. Everything the pastor says, somebody must shout. So I'm not saying we should go to church like dumb. Oh, there are certain revelations that come, quotable code that come, that you, you, you feel like screaming. But when it becomes the pattern, the pattern, whether the pastor is saying anything or not, yeah, ee, 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 ee. then, and you find that some people are very shallow. Because fake comes by young, they don't even have time to hear. Always looking, waiting for an opportunity to shout, and shouting and jumping. So you must preach them to frenzy. They, 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 become, they become like that. People become, you no. Know, the Bible calls us sheep. Sheep follows the shepherd. And like I said, there are pastors that are not satisfied until his members are doing that. Or the one falling, until they are falling. All those things have nothing to do with the fundamental teaching of the Bible. We should communicate the truth to our people and get them established in the truth. I'm not saying they should go to church and start rigid as if they're in a cemetery. No, but at least there must be balance in everything we do. We must do everything moderately. The most important thing is that they listen to the truth. In all Jesus' teachings, when he saw the man, the multitude, he went to the mountain. In the synagogue, he taught them. I didn't see anybody say, yeah! Say it! Oh, come on! Again! Everybody, the first strangers are scared. What kind of a rowdy, noisy environment is this? And oftentimes, like I said, they didn't hear anything that the pastor has said. And such pastors too are also very happy. They say, I'll preach you happy. I think I'm preaching well. Hey, if I'm preaching well, say yeah. If you got this, say yo. And then the whole place becomes yeah, yo. He says something. I find it difficult to understand. Well, uh, different uh, strokes for different folks. But what is important is that the word of God must be received, must be digested, and must be practiced so that we can see the benefit of his word. Please share, share, share. Share, share, share. <laughs> On your own areas of challenges, the asking questions, whatever is not clear to you in your life, in your marriage, in your career, in the spirit, uh, in the in the in the church, spiritual things, physical things, there is no no go area. Ask all issues. All right. So, Daddy, do one need to bother about ancestral powers? Okay, like I said, no. Once you are born again, the strongest deliverance is deliverance through the Word of God. Unknowing that's why we teach about spiritual warfare here, bringing out God's word that relates to the areas of your challenge or challenges. And using the word of God to pray, chanting the word of God, claiming it, rejecting what you should reject, claiming what you should claim, based on the word of God and your life. Over time, all the evil harassment will clear away. So, I don't quarrel with those who fall down and roll and vomit, provided that after falling, there are, there are changes, visible falling, life is not changing. Marriage is not changing, uh, morality is not changing, understanding is stagnant, then it is uh, become, it become funny. It become funny because the word of God and the power of God is supposed to change us to better. The Bible says we are being transformed from glory to glory. We are supposed to be transformed by what we hear, by what we receive, by what we practice, which is the word of God. Daddy, what do you say about a husband? Who cares less about his wife? He does things without informing her and even keep malice with her. Those are challenged marriages. 
marriages that are challenged. The one we warn people about, singles. Marriages that we have problems later, the signs of those problems will have been there. This husband that does not know care about his wife, that attitude will have been there before the woman went to the altar and said, I do. And if it's a traditional marriage or court marriage, before the man, woman said, I'll follow him. Those characteristics were there. Those characters were there. The man that keeps malice, unforgiving, those things are there. So, you are the one that should look well. Women, ladies, don't go about out jumping on men, we ladies don't go to men and say, God said I should marry you. It is men that look for ladies and said, God, I want to marry you. I want to give you a ring. I want to date you. So it is up to ladies to know what you want for yourself in life and then make sure that it's only anyone that will add value to your life that you say yes to. So husband that keep malice, that are not caring, all those attitude, attributes will have been there before you went to the altar. Don't put your head under a guillotine. When you see any of those character deformities in any man, please run and say, not this one. Wait for your own, your own will come. He keeps saying these things. I pray God will let us hear. Especially those who need to hear. Let's move on. Daddy, is it okay to correct my fiancé? Will such not generate issues in our relationship? Depends on how you try to correct your fiancé. First thing is to show love. Uh, people take corrections from those they believe love them. If they believe you love them and you have their interests, they take whatever you say serious. But if they have a perception that you don't love them, you only want to criticize them, they won't take it. And then don't criticize your fiancé openly or in public. Don't criticize your wife, don't criticize your husband publicly. Whatever correction should be when you are together privately. And even you must also be sensitive about his own mood or her mood at that time. So it is best when there is love, when there is a flow, and the way you also, presentation also matters. The way you also present the correction matters. Therefore, we must be concerned and be sensitive to the mood of our partners, of our friends, of our wives, of our, of our fiancé anytime. Well, you may say a, a right thing at the wrong time, then it will make create a uh, anger, and then you may say it at the wrong place. So, the right word to use, the right atmosphere, and then the proper time and the way you communicate it, very very important. But again, love. When I know you love me, when I believe you love me, whatever you say to me, I see it coming from a heart. That is wishing me well. Alright. Edwin Mabel, it is true. He even paid more attention to his extended family and care less about wife and children. Alright. Okay, LLC. I love my daddy. Welcome back, sir. Okay. Okay, many of you did not see me on prayer mountain on Thursday. That's how you know that I was in Bayesa, but I'm back. We're going to have a great prayer mountain. We had it last. The one you had yesterday was great. I watched it from Yenogoa, and I saw the greatness of the prayer mountain services in Ibadan and Goshenla and the Keja. Those testimonies were wonderful. Pastor Peter was also very wonderful. Thank God for his life and his ministry. Okay? So, you want to correct your fiancé? Choose the time, choose your word, choose your method, make sure it's at a good time and make sure your fiancé believes that you love him or her and you want his best or her best. When your friend corrects you, you don't flare out. But when somebody you perceive is unfriendly, 
you don't take it. Daddy, how do I know if I am praying amiss? You know if you are praying amiss, James chapter 4 verse 3 says, you pray and you don't receive because you pray amiss to use it on your own lust. So when what you are praying for is for self-aggrandizement, when what you are praying for is not established in the word of God, the word of God does not promise you. When what you are praying for does not connect with your pop, God's purpose for you in life, then you pray amiss. Whatever we are praying about or praying of, our prayer should be Bible-based. You must locate scriptures that promise you those things. And then it must also connect to your purpose. I've taught this again and again. God sent every one of us here to this world to fulfill a purpose. If what you are asking God to do is to enhance that purpose, you can never have a no for an answer. And I have explained and explained. When you send a, your child on an errand, you will equip that child to be able to carry out that errand. If you need to take a taxi uh, or an Uber, if you have a car and you can drive, if you need to take money along, if you send a person on errand to fulfill your mission, you will equip him, enable him to, to fulfill that mission. If you, if you understand that revelation, every one, of us here was, every one of us was sent by God to fulfill a particular mission. If your focus is clear, your vision is clear, your purpose is clear. If what you are asking God to do connects to his purpose for you, you can never have a no for an answer. And the answer is instant. That is why people like us will say we have never prayed a prayer that God did not answer. Because I will not pray a prayer I don't see it promised me in the Bible. And I will go to that particular scripture and quote it to God. What is prayer? It is praying God's word back to God. And I will not ask God for anything that does not connect with the purpose for which I am here on earth. And my purpose is to fulfill. He said, I have come to do your will, O God. Every one of us came to this world to do the will of God. So if you are not in his will, that is, you are not fulfilling purpose, you have not even defined purpose. I have asked every one of you to obtain Rick Warren's book, Purpose Driven Life. I don't know how many people had uh, taken to that uh, instruction. The Purpose Driven Life by Rick, Rick Warren is, is on Amazon. You can Google for it, can have soft copies, can have hard copy. You must understand what purpose is. So if you are living your life according to God's purpose for you, whatever you ask God, whatever is needful to fulfill that purpose, we should ask God. He said, before you pray, I've heard you. While you are here praying, I've answered. That is people who are on purpose. So you pray means if what you are praying for is to show vendetta, is to prove to the other folks that you also had arrived, is for self-aggrandizement. Uh, if it is not Bible-based, you must find the word of God for everything you want to pray for, Google, bring out the relevant work, and it must connect to his purpose for you on earth. If that is what you are asking God to give you, he doesn't waste time. Sir, is it a good thing for someone to tell one he has stopped praying for, for one? Somebody is telling the other person, I've stopped praying for you. If somebody says to you, I've stopped praying for you, ask him whether he's God, whether he's Jesus or the Holy Ghost. The Bible says the Holy Ghost Pray for us with groaning that cannot be uttered. Jesus is at the right hand of God interceding for us. Is that person God? If somebody says, you have stopped praying for me, I will say thank you. The prayer you prayed before, what result do I see? And you're stopping to pray for me will mean nothing. Remember, nobody can pray for you like yourself. Everyone listening to me, nobody can pray for you like yourself. If somebody says he's praying for you, thank him, but please pray for yourself. And pray on your own. And I have taught us how to pray. Google, bring out. And when you are praying using the word of God, you never get tired. You want to pray on one prayer item. You have 15 or 20 different passages of the scripture. Before you go through them one by one, applying them to that thing, you have spent 30 minutes. So those who pray and they don't know what to say again, they have no Bible to pray. Can't speak in tongue. Can't pray in the spirit. When you are praying in the spirit, you are tireless because... Your brain is not involved. So please, somebody say he's not praying for you again. Why are you bothering? Is, is it God? <laughs> is it the Holy Spirit? It is Jesus that can stop praying for you and you are worried. Or the Holy Ghost stop praying for you and they are worried and they will never stop praying for you. Then pray for yourself. Have the Holy Ghost to teach you 
how to pray. He says, for we do not know how to pray. It's the Holy Ghost that teaches us to pray and also pray for us with groaning that cannot be uttered. Shindera, Nchukusi, powerful. Patience and will you I will say thank you for stopping. <laughs> thank you for stopping to pray for me. I never knew you were even praying because I couldn't feel it. <laughs> I couldn't even feel your prayer. So I can't feel you stopping to pray. <laughs> Let nobody harass you spiritually. God has no grandson. God has no granddaughter. I say that all the time. You two can pray directly to God through the name of Jesus Christ. He said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will do. If anybody pray for you, it should be an addition to what you are praying for yourself. The person praying for you also have prayer needs. <laughs> the person praying for you also have prayer needs. Tell him not to harass you. He's not God. He's not the Holy Ghost. What do you say? Stop praying for me. <laughs> I will remember say, I will say thank you for stopping. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Thank you for stopping. YouTube, I can't see your comment. Dollar you won. Yes, Daddy. I was really blessed by Pastor Peter's sermon. Okay. Pastor Peter, people are blessed when you spoke yesterday at the prayer mountain. God bless you. Do more. You need to very right, sir. Mm -hmm. I can you come and harass me by saying you stop praying for me? Are you God? Are you the Holy Spirit? Did I feel your prayer before? <laughs> Pray for yourself. Everybody has needs. Daddy, what is your take on this issue of new currency? Does it change anything, sir? This must be a Nigerian asking this question. Even those of you that are outside Nigeria and you are Nigerians, I'm sure you you even you even hear more the news at home more than we that at home. <laughs> Nigerians in diaspora. They hear Nigerian news more those that more, more than those of us that are in Nigeria. Only that they hear exaggerated form. <laughs> they hear exaggerated side. They are killing them. Oh, they are abducting them. Oh. <laughs> I travel from uh, but that thought they might not. If I don't back to Yenugua, Yenugua back to Lagos, Lagos back to Ibadan. Nobody kidnap you. Nobody has ever kidnapped me. Nobody has ever shot at me. But you see. The news that those of you are diaspora, what you hear, is the news that frightens you. Some people who want to come to Nigeria from UK, from America, they are declaring seven days of fasting and praying. <laughs> for coming to their, for coming to their ancestral home, for coming to their root. No, 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 no. They are exaggerated news. Boko Haram is on the extreme northeast of Nigeria. Nigeria is about six, eight countries put together. All right. Anyway, let me go to what you are saying. Now, the new currency. Again, there are many things we are not doing well here because we have leadership challenge. I was saying to them in Yenogoa, I said to them, I said, as Nigerians, we are not normal. We are not normal people. <laughs> How can you talk about Naira swap? You are changing the color of Naira. I said to them, right now, in Britain, Queen Elizabeth is late. The new king, the head of the new king, is already coming on in their money, their coin, and I think perhaps even the paper uh, currency. Those of you in UK, please help me. I see that the head of the of His Majesty the King is already being used to replace the head of the late queen. Is there any noise? No. But Nigeria wants to change. 1,000 Naira note, 200 Naira note, 500 Naira note, and there's bro, ah. I mean, what I have seen in Sena clients is that as the old currency gets into the bank, they take it away and they give you the new. Over a period of time, the whole thing is changed. Sometimes they give it two years, sometimes they give it one year. Here, we were given 90 days. <laughs> and in 90 days, you take the old currency to the bank, ATM still give you old currency. That's where the problem setting. So there must be a saboteur in the system. However, the central bank decision to change the old notes in order to 
get the Naira in circulation back to the Central Bank is laudable. It's a very good policy because Central Bank no longer has control over the currency in circulation. Till the quarter of the currency in circulation never comes back to the Central Bank. And they want to bring the money back. And listen to me, Nigerians, people in diaspora, they understand this very, very well. The economy of Nigeria cannot be fixed with the way we are running things. Nigeria is the only place I see where people can go to a bank and withdraw a hundred million. They withdraw 200 million naira a day at once. Cash. They take 100 million, 50 million, 10 million to bank a day. And the bank does not ask them, where do you get this? They go in Ghana must go. Nigeria is the only country I see people go with Ghana must go to bank to bring money out. And Ghana must go to go and lodge money in the bank. So what the central bank was trying to do was to call this money back so that they can have control over the quantum of the money in circulation. But like every other thing in Nigeria, the implementation was bad. The corruption and the corruption and the corruption you hear in Nigeria is because the money outside there that is not within the bank is much. All these kidnappers asking ransom of 100 million or 50 million, all these thieves in the government, federal government especially, even state government, that take bribe in millions, they don't take check, they don't take transfer, it is physical cash they take. 100 million naira that the kidnappers are asking for, 50 million is in physical cash. 20 million, 10 million, 100 million, 200 million, 500 million that people used to bribe government officials, military officials, is in cash. Where do they get it? That cannot happen anywhere in the world. All of you in UK, I just returned from the United Kingdom not too long ago. I don't think anybody can go to any bank in London and say, I want to withdraw 50,000 pounds or 20,000 pounds. They will tell you the limits you can withdraw in a week. And you come back next week so that they can control the money in circulation. I don't think you can bring one million pounds raw cash, 50,000 50, pounds in raw cash. They will ask you, where did you get this money? What job did you do? How much tax did you pay? So it is to introduce sanity into our physical policy, Naira in circulation, but implementation became challenged because there must be some saboteurs within the system and unfortunately we have a president that is just lame duck doesn't talk he doesn't see he doesn't hear that's our that's our problem how can you be the head of a place the buck ends at the president's table how can you put somebody at the central bank governor and he sought your clearance you gave the approval for the naira chain and implementation becomes a problem why don't you call him to say why Give him the boot. So it is a good policy. It will check corruption. The Boko Haram and those that are kidnapping people and asking them to bring 100 million, 50 million will not get any million. They should even make the highest money you can withdraw in cash will not be more than 5,000 naira a day. So that transfer, you know, cashless policy can go. I mean, I don't want to. Okay, I have seen our people reacting. Eunice. Udukoya, you are in London. It's already saying, very right, sir. Very right, sir. I think I was in London one day. I wanted to buy a thing. I brought cash. The person was asking for credit card. I said, I don't have credit card. He didn't take the money. He didn't tell me the thing. You can't take 10,000. You can't. I, now, the highest denomination in UK is 50 pounds. Isn't it? I don't, I've never seen anyone in UK, in London, having 50, 50 pounds in strands, in ones. 50 50 pounds they still spend coin there they still value one penny one pound in coin here the coin has disappeared everybody that's what has devalued naira devalue our economy somebody goes to the bank and withdraw 100 million at the point he goes to lodge 200 million at the time cash where is it coming from it should be online so that it could be traceable what people do in cash is not traceable they bribe in cash, they pay ransom in cash, they bribe in cash. So when you remove that cash and make it cashless, you will see that all this nonsense will stop. 
because you cannot trace who got money, where the money went to, and the rest of it. Anyway, so I can see message. You are right, sir. Okay, this commission will not ask you to pay any financial assistance. Please beware of scammers. Okay. I can see people reacting to that. God bless you. More anointing. Watching from United Kingdom. All right. I will say thank you for stopping. Okay. Let's go on. So what's the time now? Okay, we still have time. So that's all about new currency. It's a good uh, program. It's a good policy. The implementation is what had problem, like many of the things we do in Nigeria. So I believe all this... A crisis will go by the grace of God. It will go. The central bank will either extend the time, bring out more, more new notes, except if the sabotage is coming from the federal government itself. And we are hearing all kinds of things. It's for the election. Some people are carrying bullion vine. They want to make their money useless. All kinds of things. They want a party to win. They want a party to lose. You know, Nigeria, all kinds of theories will be flying. But anyway, February 25 will soon be here. February 25, if they don't cancel or postpone the election, we'll know where we are going as far as electioneering campaign is concerned. That is, uh, is that, is it that you don't want us to leave the country due to your messages? Or why are you condemning Japa? <laughs> I was here in Ogo and I heard Pastor Peter saying that one of my video clips that talk about Japa had gone viral and a lot of people are making comments and many people are saying where well, he has sent his own children abroad now he's asking them not to japa he wants to keep them under the suffering here his own children are abroad he said he laughed and laughed he called his twin brother paul in ibadaze i hope that he does not have other children somewhere else <laughs> i hope that he does not have other children outside of us because people are saying his children are abroad and he's saying people should not jump out here. <laughs> I tell you, many or much of the news you hear on social media, they are unverifiable, they are uh, fake news. Now, at the, uh, in that clip, I said I didn't ask anybody not to travel. Uh, relocation, traveling has been immemorial. I saw you remember Abraham jumped back to Egypt. When there was famine in the land, because he japa against purpose, he had to tell a lie to survive. Through his wife Sarah, he almost lost his wife. And God said, "Get out of this land." And it was when he got out that you saw his blessings came. I said, "Lord, japa unknown to him, he was japa into towards Sodom and Gomorrah." I said, "Elimelech and Naomi japa because there was." Famine in the land, and the husband was lost, their two sons was lost. Naomi returned a devastated woman. But there are those who Jakpa, Joseph Jakpa to Egypt and became a prime minister. So I but he went there with a dream, a clear dream, a clear vision that he would not compromise. So I said, Before you Jakpa, before you travel to any country, what value have you put on yourself? What is your purpose of going? Have you prayed and God said, go? Are you going there to add value? I said, don't go to any other country illegally. There are many Nigerians in prison. More, many, many, in all over the world, many Nigerians are in prison because they go there to break their laws, immigration laws. They tell all kinds of lies, seek asylum. They want to kill me in Nigeria, save me. And uh, if you go to any country illegally and you want to stay, you will have to tell lies. All kind of lies and there are lawyers there that will help you make up your paper and i ask the question if you have to tell all these lies all this falsehood in order to stay go and take another person's head go and do rng marry tell lie falsify all document say so what conscience what have do you still have to pray are you still a christian that way are you still a christian do you still think you pray god will answer you i say you still in fellowship so that is what I was talking about. I'm not saying, people, oh, there are many Nigerians all over the world doing great things. Legally, dual citizenship, they are Americans, they are uh, uh, Britons, they are Swedish, they are, and they are doing great. 
but they went legally. They, they had papers, they studied, they are making contributions, they have purpose. So what I was talking about is that let everything you do, including traveling to foreign land, be on purpose and on God telling you. So that's why I refer to those who did it in the Bible, made their Waterloo, those who did it and they did well. Many people travel and lost their marriage, lost their homes, lost their children, their children became something else. Because those are the lands of freedom. And when you enter into another culture, another setting, another tradition, if you don't know how to survive, if you don't know how to understand it, if you come with the mentality of Nigerian into other places, you just make a wreck of it. So I didn't ask anybody not to jackpa. But I said jackpa on purpose. Don't go and jackpa into prison. Don't go and jackpa into becoming an illegal person, breaking their laws, jackpa and be hiding where you see police, jackpa and be enslaved, doing some menial job you can't do when you are here. Said so Nigeria is not that tough. You can, you can, you can survive where God. When people ask me where is the best place to settle, settle where you will add value, settle where it connects to your purpose on earth, settle where you can serve God and touch humanity. Life is a waste if all we come to do is to eat like animals, like goats. It's more than eating or wearing clothes. It is fulfilling purpose, touching life and serving God. I don't know how much I can explain these things. Tonya is you must have value to add anywhere you are going. Yes, you must have value to add. You must be a value adder in that country, not a liability. Breaking their laws and becoming a shame to your country, Nigeria or Ghana. You need to say very right, sir. Nigeria is too much. So I am not asking anybody not to travel. I understand that so many things in that video went viral. But they won't listen to the balance that connects it to purpose, add value to yourself, go and add value to that land, earn decent money, live clean, live legally, and then run according to your purpose. Many people travel, God is no longer in the agenda. No church, no God. It is hustle, 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 hustle. No, life is more than that. Okay? We will tell the truth here. And uh, let Jesus will say, let him that has here to hear, hear. So there must be a reason why Jesus said that. Because many people will misinterpret what he said, exaggerate it. So he said, let those who have here to hear. So I also said, let those who have here to hear, hear what we are saying here. Be typing in your own situation. We will answer that on Monday. Be typing in your situation. Be describing your situations. We are describing those of others today. Okay, we have about 12 more minutes to go. Are you getting blessed? Are you getting something? Okay. Obasi. He said people hear what they want to hear. Not necessarily what they need to hear. We will say the truth and balance the messages. We leave individual to make decisions. One thing I know is that those who hear the truth and they do contrary to the truth, they will soon regret because truth is truth. Fully, you know how many Nigerians are in prison all over the country, all over the world. You won't say what you are saying. If you know how many Nigerians are regretting, they are relocating because they didn't do it well. But like I said, many Nigerians are doing great, are doing well for themselves and for the nation and for this country. All right, the money, diaspora money that comes back to this country is a part of the power sustaining our economy. Good. Some people are the reason their families back home are able to survive. They send money, school, build houses for them, send their monthly allowances, take care of their family. Wonderful. So I'm not discouraging anybody from relocating. I'm saying let it be on purpose, have value to add, don't do it illegally. Adi allow Jenny. You're almost uh, uh, crucifying your daddy for balancing this japa or no japa. Asking people to connect it to purpose. If you are a Christian, hear from God and then go there to fulfill the purpose, to add value to yourself, to your the country where you are and back home. 
That is the purpose. And of course, one day you will return home. Aren't you going to return home? One day you will return home. At least you become citizen of two countries. You go and come. You have investment here. You have investment here. You become a blessing to generation. That is the kind of jackpot that uh, I am calling. Okay, of I have seen a lot of people doing well and a lot of them in trouble because of wrong motives and illegal processes. You said it all. All right. Let's move fast. Let those who have ear to hear, hear. Sir, what should I do, sir? For the past 16 years, I have been lonely. Loneliness. What should I do, sir? For the past 16 years, I have been lonely. Many people are lonely in life. Oh, Jenny. Adiola, Jenny, you have taught us purpose over 25 years. A lot are just coming in contact with purpose-driven messages. Please, I say one more time. All of you watching me, tell others. Go and obtain Rick Warren's book, Purpose-Driven Life. And this is not my book. You won't say I'm looking for money. It's online. Google Rick Warren, Purpose-Driven Life. Everybody read that book, digest it. It will help you. It will help you nurse your children. Any life out of purpose is a life that will soon run into crisis. So please, any life out of purpose is a life that will be abused. Don't, don't take a permanent decision in a temporary situation. And I can tell you, I am in Nigeria. I will remain in Nigeria. I will ever be in Nigeria. I travel up and down, but I come back to Nigeria. Because my purpose is tied to, it, to this place. Now... I will tell you that Nigeria will not be like this. It will not always be like this. It was never like this. It was because of the terrible leadership fostered on us by our political elites. But by the grace of God, Nigeria will change. Nigeria will become the disaster of nations. One missionary, one man of God in the 70s had prophesied. In fact, when the power SGL team, was saying that Nigeria will become such a corrupt nation, the most corrupt in the world, that people will run away from Nigeria. But after a while, it will change. God will revisit Nigeria, and there will be the most desired of nations. People will be clamoring to come to Nigeria and live in Nigeria. Those days, you will need dictionary to understand the meaning of corruption. There was nothing like corruption. There was nothing like all this. He said so. And if what he said then came to pass, in the level of correction, what he also said in Nigeria's change will also come to pass. I believe in that by SGL team prophecy of the 70s or is it the 80s? So please, those of you in diaspora also have one mind that have some investment back home. Nigeria is going to be great again. Daddy, how can one hand do a person? Okay, somebody said it's lonely. Please deliver yourself from loneliness. Don't be lonely. Why should you be lonely? Get out of that loneliness, open up, chill, come out of your hibernation, get involved in church, a church where you flow, and get involved in all their service arms, get involved in some other NGOs, get involved in community development, have friends, why must you be lonely? And of course, if you need to marry, open up, and God will bring your own spouse that will love you as you are. Daddy, how can one hand do a person that thinks he knows more than others? I have answered this question before. I hope the person you are talking about is not your spouse. Because <laughs> when you people ask questions like this, in, 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 in parables, how can one hand do a person that thinks he knows more than others? If the person you are talking about is your spouse, you need patience, you need understanding. But if it's not your spouse, if it's just a friend, a colleague, he thinks he knows more than others, don't leave him. He who does not know and he thinks he knows, he's a fool. Don't leave him. What well, how long are you going to argue with a fool? Because those who know don't even prove that they know. It is those who listen to them or see their result that appreciate them. You don't have to shout to be heard. No. You don't have to shout to be heard. You don't have to make noise. Let your results speak for you. Let your character speak for you. Let the quality of your life speak for you. 
It says empty barrel makes the loudest noise. If somebody does not know and he thinks he knows more than others, just leave him. <laughs> he's, he's living in the fool's paradise. But if that person is your spouse, well, you have a bigger challenge because you need to accommodate him or her. You need to deal with him in patience. But again, like I said, this negative character must have been in him or her before you sheepishly sign, I do. <laughs> Even you went to court or went to church or went for traditional wedding and you say, I do. You say, I do to a self-opinionated person. Who doesn't listen to another person? <laughs> I've met people like that in life. Self-opinionated. They have answer to every... When you see somebody, they have answer to every discussion. <laughs> He's a fool. <laughs> Even when you know. Wisdom demands that most of the times you should also listen to what others are saying. So that you can add it to yours and have a balanced view. So, but if you think you know it all, just leave that person. Like one program here, we say, we say, walk away. Just walk away. <laughs> and leave him to be fooling himself or herself. Loneliness is the fellow single, then marry your friend. Okay. Yes, so Nigeria is going to be great again. Yes. That has been spoken a long time. It's so true, Daddy. We need to identify our purpose in life. Go and read that book. Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. It's not a big book. I will, I will check my, I will check my library and bring it out to show you. But Google Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. You will see it. Please get a soft copy or a hard copy and read it, digest it, and apply it. Where you are missing it, get it right. Daddy, who should have the final say in the life of an adult, God or the parents? Who should have a final say? Let's take that one as the last one as we close. Who should have a final say in the life of an adult? God or the parents? We have treated parenting here tonight. That a child is either lost, won or lost in their infancy. The one of life to a seven of life, I say that. Alright? So, who should have a final say in the life of an adult? And I don't have this on her mind. So, it's God. Parents can have advice. Can you imagine a parent advising me now? I will listen, but I will still do what I think is best for me. Because I have matured. My character is formed. I know what I want for myself in life. Don't argue with your parents. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long. Honoring them does not mean taking everything they say sheepishly. Lies who can, uh, who can, lies sink and hookah. Now, many of our parents did not know more than what they know. So they couldn't act beyond their knowledge. But you don't argue with your parents. You don't shout on them. You say thank you. But you go and do what you know is right. And like I said, when they see results, they will say, oh, you are saying the truth. Oh, thank God I didn't stop you. All right? So who should have the final say? The adults and God taking the advice from parents. So it is not something... When you see parents fighting and striving with their adult child, 25, 28, 30, 22, the parents are just wasting time. They are acting in ignorance. At that age, his or her character is formed. Whatever you have not been able to embed into him or her in infancy is late. So it can only be prayer. My son has gone to gone to be transgender. My son has gone to be smoking. He has gone into drug. The only thing you can do is prayer for God to save his soul and give him an encounter. It's late. It is at infancy you can change their life and turn them. Hmm? Somebody says, is it okay to teach children to pay tight? We say yes, from infancy. Let them imbibe morality, Bible standard your idea, your history, your value, your God, your doctrine. So please, let's follow all these teachings. It is well with us. Are you blessed? Did you get things out of our sharing today in all areas that we touched? Please add whatever truths you have had tonight. Add it to what you know before. 
The purpose of this live broadcast is to bring practical solutions to people's problems and challenges. You hear the truth, profile it with your life, and it will turn out better. My whole purpose and vision is to be a human coach, a counselor, a mentor, a teacher, bringing you the truth, balancing the spiritual with the physical. Life is not only physical, it's also spiritual. Life is not only spiritual, it's also natural and physical. That must be a way you balance the two laws and make good things out of your life. That is what we teach here. Okay, people are already saying to me, thank you, thank you, we are blessed. Yes, 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 more anointing. Uh, all these things you say are the impetus that keep it, uh, encouraging me. If you see how much I have gone through today, I woke up by 4 a.m. to make sure I prepare for what I went to do in Yanagua. I was in Yanagua ministering, got out from there, got into the plane by 3 p.m., got to Lagos by 4 p.m., traffic in Lagos held me down, got to Ibadan by after 7, and I'm still here doing this because I enjoy that my life that is blessing you, you are deriving benefits. My whole life is to benefit humanity. The rest of my life is at adding value to life and adding value to God's kingdom. I'm passionate about two things, the kingdom of God and the issue about our country, how we can take Nigeria back and make it an environment where we can serve our God, raise our children, People can come from diaspora. People can go from here there. The first time we were going to UK, there was no visa. You got and they say, welcome to London. Welcome to London. It is at the point of entry. They give you as many, how long are you staying? They give it to you. Go and come. Nigeria is it going to come to that level. All right. So King God's kingdom, the life of people God had made to get connected to me. All of you receive turning point every day. They broadcast it to people. Subscribe to our YouTube. If you are not yet on our YouTube, I'll say that again and again. And please click notification. Turn on your notification. That bell like symbol on your screen, click on it. Let other people connected to you be connected. I love you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please uh, apply all these things to your life. Raise your children. Run your business, your career, your health with it. And God, we bless you. I love you. I love you. But please connect to us every morning. Listen to Tony Point. The Lord bless you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm going to rest. You also have a wonderful night. If it is night where you are, a wonderful day. If it is daytime where you are, watch life and watch later. God bless you. We are shutting down. We are shutting down.